Today, I'm diving into some of your burning questions about SIBO yogurt, El Reuteri yogurt, and the many other fermented dairy creations developed by Dr. William Davis. I've made more batches of these yogurts than I can possibly count, and I've also combed through Dr. Davis's blog, book, etc., to get you the best answers. For more, I'll have his website, etc., linked for you also below. Let's get started so you can make these gut healthy yogurts at home. What's half and half? Half and half in the US is a blend of half milk and half cream, hence the name. Typically containing around 10 to 12% fat-ish. It may be called half cream, light cream, etc. in other countries. Do I have to use half and half? No, you do not. Dr. Davis uses this because it makes a nice creamy end result that he finds optimal. What type of milk can I use? You can use half and half or essentially some combination of cream and milk. You can use whole or even 2% milk. I personally use whole milk because the lower fat milks give you a runny yogurt and I think there are benefits to full fat. I would totally avoid skim milk as it will just be too runny. Can I use goat or sheep milk? You can use both but you'll likely get a thinner result, perhaps even more separation of the yogurt and whey as well, which I'll get into later. Do I have to use ultra pasteurized milk? Yes, for this yogurt, your half and half or your milk, whatever you decide to use needs to be ultra pasteurized. Given the prolonged fermentation time, you must ultra pasteurize your milk to avoid dangerously high counts of the wrong bacteria. Ultra pasteurization also denatures the milk proteins in a way that will help give you a thicker yogurt. If you have milk that wasn't ultra pasteurized, you can do this yourself by heating it to 195 degrees Fahrenheit or 90 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. What if I'm lactose intolerant? Good news, you will likely be able to tolerate this yogurt because the prolonged fermentation maximally converts lactose into lactic acid. So there's barely any lactose left in this yogurt. What if I don't tolerate A1 milk? Can I eat this yogurt? You could always just make this yogurt with A2 milk. But otherwise, the good news is that this yogurt is acidic enough that it denatures the A1 beta casein protein of your milk, making it much more easy to handle. Can I make a non-dairy version? Yes, Dr. Davis currently has a non-dairy version made with coconut milk. I have a video on this and I will have it linked for you below. Why not just take the probiotic? You could, but for conditions such as SIBO, for example, you want really high bacterial counts to produce the desired results. So by making yogurt, you are massively increasing the bacterial counts and thus the ability to achieve results. What temperature should I use to ferment my yogurt? Well, it depends on the yogurt you're making. Dr. Davis has various yogurts. El Reuteri yogurt, for example, is fermented at 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. But if you're making SIBO yogurt, which is a combination of El Reuteri and two other strains, l and B-coagulans, you would ferment at a higher temperature that's a happy medium for all three strains, which is 106 degrees Fahrenheit or 41 degrees Celsius. What happens if I ferment at the temperature of traditional yogurt, which is about 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius? plus or minus a few degrees. Well, you're at risk of killing the bacteria you're trying to grow. What device can I use to ferment my yogurt? An Instant Pot that's able to maintain the correct temperature, a yogurt maker, of course, or a sous vide. Feel free to get creative with other ways of maintaining temperature if you don't wanna invest in one of these devices, but again, you wanna maintain the correct temperature for the duration of fermentation. What if my Instant Pot doesn't have a yogurt button or has a yogurt button with no adjustable temperature? Do a test run with water and check with the thermometer to see what temperature your Instant Pot actually keeps. I have an Instant Pot with a yogurt button that's not adjustable, for example, and I found that if I make my yogurt in glass mason jars rather than directly in the Instant Pot's basin, I can maintain the temperature I need for SIBO yogurt. However, I can't maintain the lower temperature that I would need for El Reuteri yogurt, for example. So I have another Instant Pot with an adjustable yogurt button that I use to make El Reuteri yogurt. Do I have to ferment my yogurt for 36 hours? Yes, to get optimal bacterial counts based on the studies that have currently been done. Although Dr. Davis currently ferments his non-dairy yogurt, for 48 hours. And I say currently because these recipes are evolving and sometimes change as he studies and learns more, but currently 36 hours for dairy, 48 for non-dairy. Should I sterilize my yogurt equipment? 
it's really best practice, especially for this yogurt, to sterilize, yes. Just to keep unwanted bacteria out of your yogurt, heat your equipment in boiling water for 10 minutes or use the sterilization or steam setting on your Instant Pot, for example, to sterilize any jars, utensils, whatever. Do I have to cover my yogurt? So aside from putting the top of your actual machine on, inside, if you have your yogurt in a container, do you cover that? And the answer is yes. You don't want other microbes from the air getting into your yogurt. So if you have your yogurt in a mason jar, for example, put the mason jar lid loosely on it or cover it loosely with plastic wrap. And I say loosely because you do want gases to be able to escape. And I'm sorry because I was guilty of not covering my yogurt before and I told some of you guys you didn't have to, but you really do want to. Why is the top of my yogurt pink? This can be the result of not covering your yogurt. And according to Dr. Davis, he says that it's actually pink mold because mold is in the air, it's everywhere essentially. And if you don't have your yogurt covered, it can get on there. And for some foods, it's really not okay to just scrape mold off, but he does say for this yogurt, it's okay to just scrape it off and the rest of the yogurt is safe to eat. I have done this before and I'm still alive. Is it normal for my yogurt to separate into curds and whey? Yes, separation is very common with this yogurt on the first batch. It's called the first batch effect. What should I do if my yogurt separates? You can still eat the yogurt. It's not a sign of bad yogurt, but most importantly, use that yogurt to start the next batch of yogurt. Subsequent batches will eventually have no separation, generally even by the second batch. You can think of this as the bacteria getting warmed up. I don't think they fully know why this happens, but just don't start again from scratch. What if my yogurt continues to separate on subsequent batches? One of the most common reasons is that your yogurt device is not truly keeping the yogurt at the correct temperature. So test with water and a thermometer. Do I have to add prebiotic fiber like inulin? You don't have to, although it's really recommended because this is food for the bacteria and it multiplies their counts significantly. And it also gives you a thicker consistency. Is it normal for my yogurt to taste sour? Yes, prolonged fermentation results in a sour yogurt because there's more lactic acid. And that's a really good sign that you're getting lots of beneficial bacteria. If it's too sour for you, top with berries, do whatever you need to add flavor, but the sourness will also mellow out a lot of times in subsequent batches. I'll also add your taste buds are likely to change and get used to this because now when I eat regular yogurt, I feel like it tastes like nothing and I would way rather eat a sour yogurt. How long does it last in the refrigerator? About four weeks. Can I strain my yogurt to make Greek yogurt? Yes, and luckily you won't lose tons of bacteria. Some will be in the way, but a large majority stay bound up in the yogurt. How much and how often should I eat the yogurt? A half a cup a day is fine. More needs to be studied on larger quantities. Plus, if you wanna minimize any negative effects of dairy, this is a good amount. And if you're doing well, you could reduce your intake to a half a cup two to three times a week for maintenance of the bacteria. Does l reuteri permanently colonize the gut? Most studies indicate transient presence in the gut, which is why you wanna eat this yogurt or at least take the probiotic periodically for maintenance as just mentioned. Can I just drink kefir? Kefir is excellent and has numerous probiotic strains, but those strains can vary greatly. You may or may not have l reuteri, for example, in your particular kefir. And then what l reuteri strain is it? You're also unlikely to have the large quantities because the l reuteri is mixed with other probiotics. So so basically, if you want the specific concentrated results Dr. Davis is studying, you would want to make yogurt with those specific strains. But yes, making your own kefir, however, would definitely be another way to add beneficial gut bacteria. Watch out for store-bought as it often has fewer strains or isn't made from kefir grains. There are a couple good brands out there, but you really got to look at the labels. What strains in particular of these bacteria should I use? One bacteria, l for example, has various strains that have different properties and affect us differently. And new strains are continually identified. l one of the popular ones, for example, has 200 different strains. So if you want to stick to the ones Dr. Davis has picked for specific results, pay attention to the exact strain or even use his own product. He now has his own l capsules. With that said, the other strains may give you benefits as well. And sometimes it's just good to mix things up. I'll have various products linked below that you can choose from, including Dr. Davis's tablets, which takes some of the guesswork out for you. Do I use the Myroiderai capsule 
with 10 billion or 20 billion CFUs. If you're using Dr. Davis's capsules to make L. Reuteri yogurt, or if you use it in conjunction with the other bacteria, for example, to make SIBO yogurt, the 10 billion capsule, the 10 billion CFU capsule provides you with more than enough bacteria to make powerful yogurt. What's the glycemic index of this yogurt? I don't know exactly, but it's likely extremely low for several reasons. Fermenting yogurt for 36 hours allows the bacteria to consume nearly all the lactose, the milk sugar, thus reducing the carbohydrate content. Plus, if made with full fat milk, for example, the fat and protein are gonna further reduce the glycemic index by slowing digestion and absorption of any remaining sugars. How much protein is in this yogurt? The protein content in this yogurt comes primarily from the milk, so the more protein in the milk, the more protein there will be in the finished yogurt. Strain the yogurt to make Greek yogurt if you wanna increase the protein. Can SIBO yogurt eradicate SIBO? Yes, it can, but the length of time may vary depending on the severity. It could eradicate it in as little as a month. How many times can I reculture with a previous batch of yogurt? Infinite, as long as you've been careful and nothing has been contaminated. When in doubt, start fresh. Are these yogurts okay for pregnancy? We're not certain because of oxytocin and the fact that it can cause uterine contractions in large amounts. So it's just unclear as to whether or not the high bacterial counts in some of these yogurts are safe. At the same time, we're supposed to have bacteria such as L. Reuteri. So this brings me to the next question. Can you mix these probiotics with other yogurt? Yes, you could take store-bought yogurt and add some milk along with L. Reuteri, for example, and make a mixed culture. This will give you lower counts of L. Reuteri that would likely be safer for pregnant women. And with that said, can children eat this yogurt? If talking about L. Reuteri yogurt in particular, again, this question doesn't have a completely definitive answer because research is ongoing. The first thing to note is that numerous clinical trials of L. Reuteri in children have showed positive outcomes, and we know we're all meant to have this bacteria in our guts. However, it's unknown as to whether or not the high quantities in L. Reuteri yogurt are safe. So to get around this, you could make a mixed culture yogurt with other strains that will decrease the amount of L. Reuteri, or you could potentially even give children small amounts on occasion. This is really just gonna be up to you until more research gives us more definitive answers. Can I freeze my yogurt? Yes, what hurts this yogurt is heat as it kills the bacteria. If however, you wanna take a break from your yogurt and freeze some, and then when you're ready to use it, thaw it and make your yogurt that's perfectly fine. Can I use a blender? This is straight from Dr. Davis's blog regarding L. Reuteri in particular. Don't use a blender with your yogurt as this kills the living microbes. While you may still obtain the oxytocin provoking effect, you lose L. Reuteri's probiotic properties. And we don't want that. I did not realize this. I had read somewhere, actually probably a year ago, that microbes were too small to be sheared by a blender, but you can definitely make your smoothie and then add your yogurt and mix it in afterwards. That's all I've got for now. It's probably enough. This yogurt is evolving and Dr. Davis and others are learning more about it. So stay tuned and remember to eat real food. I'll see you in the next video.